moving on to the quarterfinals of our uh, last man standing lightweight tournament. And the first fighter to enter the octagon into the blue corner. Let's hear it for John Dewis. Okay, here I am with John Dewis. Uh, John trains out of Drop Zone MMA and has a current mixed martial arts record of two wins and two losses. And tonight he is fighting in the eight man uh, tournament. John, how are you doing today, mate? I'm very well, thank you very much. Excellent. Now, obviously, you've got a, a bit of a mixed record there. You've had four fights before, but tonight it's something a little bit different, potentially fighting three fights in one night. Tell me how your preparation's gone. Preparation is pretty much the same as usual, just working longer rounds, long, uh, working harder, I suppose, put more in. A few more injuries this time, <laughs> like, but yeah, everything's going all right. Think just I take think, it how it comes. Exactly, I think everyone's in the same boat, though. You know, when, you, when you're dealing with mixed martial artists, I don't think there's a mixed martial artist walking the planet right now that hasn't got an injury somewhere on them. Absolutely not. Exactly, so look, it's, it, it's a matter of course, really. But look, um, you know, obviously you, you've got no game plan because you could be fighting potentially three people and you don't know who you're fighting. Correct. So obviously you're going to go in there play to your strengths. What are you looking for? Are you Are looking for the takedown or are you looking to stand and bang? It's a tough one. Uh, there's some good grapplers in there tonight, so I'm going to try and avoid the takedown. Just nice and gently keep them at bay. Do you know, not go too much this time. Do you know, I think I blew myself out last time. Uh, got a few good shots off last time and went a little bit crazy. So mm. this time I'm going to be a little bit more chilled okay. and try and be more. So relaxed. have you learned your lesson from last time? Have you, have you sorted the cardio out? I sure have. Yeah. Good man. Good man. Well, listen. All that's really left to say, mate, is uh, best of luck for tonight, John. Thank and you. we'll look forward to seeing you later on. Okay. Thank you. And his opponent entering into the red corner. Let's hear it for Jeff Ogendo. Okay, here I am with Jeff Ogendo. Uh, and Jeff is fighting in the tournament tonight. Uh, Jeff currently trains out of Archer MMA in Nottingham and uh, is currently uh, three and three for a record. Jeff, how are you doing today, mate? I'm doing great, mate. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Now, obviously, um, uh, you come from Archer MMA. Uh, Carsten, your head coach, there's a, a good friend of mine, mm. and he's a veteran of Fight UK of many, many other shows. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I, I know for a fact he's going to be putting putting you through your paces. How's training been going for the tournament? Oh, it's been amazing because um, I came off a title fight to uh, first of March. So it's just been a constant training uh, regimen, as it were. So for the last eight to ten weeks, I've been pushed really hard, working to make uh, my weaknesses, my strengths, and so on and so forth. So I'm feeling very Excellent. confident. Yeah. Good, good. Very strategic training plan in place. Indeed, then, yeah? yeah. Now, obviously, you could be fighting up to three times tonight. Now, this is obviously going to be something new for you. You've never fought in a tournament format before. Mm. How do you think you're going to? Uh, how do you think you're going to approach this? I think I'll be good after getting the first fight out of the way because um, I do train for rounds that are way more than the tournament is because the tournament works out to be about I think maybe 25 think, minutes in total yeah, seven, 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 seven rounds in total yeah yeah when I train during the week I spar for longer rounds than that and I train with pros most of the time uh, short periods of rest longer rounds so I'll be fine cardio wise excellent everything was, yeah. well look your confidence levels are amazing you've got a big smile on your face you look like you're in really good shape mate yeah. so it looks like everything mental and physical preparation has gone very very well mm. so all, all that's left to really say Jeff is, is best of luck for tonight and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you in the cage later thank you Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing these tournament fighters properly. Fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Bedworth. He's 32 years old, stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, and weighed in at 153 pounds. He fights for Drop Zone MMA and has a mixed martial arts record of four contests, two wins and two losses. Let's hear it for John Adewis. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Nottingham. He's 25 years old, stands five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 152 pounds. He fights for Archer MMA and has a mixed martial arts record of six contests, three wins and three losses. Let's hear it for Jeff Ogendo. This tournament contest is fought over two three-minute rounds with a potential uh, three-minute overtime. 
So here we are, Lloyd. This is what they're all here for. The last man standing tournament. Eight fighters opening round here. Winner of the whole tournament gets £2,000. Incredible prize money for, for an amateur event. And the opening fight here, we're seeing John Dewis in the black and yellow shorts against Jeff Agando in the white shorts. Absolutely, yeah. We're in with the lightweight weight category. Agando goes in early for the takedown. Now at the last, last man standing, we saw the opening rounds go the distance nearly every single time. It'd be interesting to see if we see it different today. My take on it would be to get it over and done with as quick as possible, minimal injury, minimal gas tank. How would you do it, Ben? There's a lot of ways when people talk about the best way to fight tournaments. If you've got that, that grinding, almost wrestling kind of style, and you can get in there and take your man down and, and get out there with it, go in the rounds, but not taking a lot of damage, that's obviously one way people look at the, the tournament that Amak had not too long ago, where uh, Martin Stapleton was successful, employed that game plan very successfully, was taking people down, utilizing the takedowns quite a lot. And there's, a, as you said there, though, there's a, a very good argument to be made for getting yourself in there, getting the job done, and getting out, not getting paid by the hour. And the longer that you do stay in there, what you're looking at is, it, like you say, it's going to fatigue and a player factor. A lot of tournaments uh, take that kind of take that format really some yeah. good top control here from agando as Dewis is trying to work he was working that half guard lockdown wasn't he ben he was looking to stretch that leg out a little bit but i like agando has got back to a full guard he's looking to just pepper away a little bit these yeah. fights obviously uh, interesting one of my favorite passes here from agendo Dewis had half butterfly in agendo loops under grabs the butterfly ankle and then uses his hips to try and push down the pass hasn't worked in this instant but it's a very nice pass. I do like that one. And what we're looking as well is obviously these fights booked originally for two three-minute rounds in the event of it being a draw. We're looking at a sudden victory round. So fighters, as you say, could, could be on the broadsides of nine rounds this evening. Each time warming up, cooling down, waiting around, warming up, cooling down. You know, it's... You know, call, call, call me lazy, but I'd want to get it done ASAP. In and out, done. Thank you very much. Mine will be a large Coke. Other cola-based beverages are available. And, uh, you know, back in for your next one. Right, so where are we? Dewis raining down a couple of light shots. We've got Agando is again looking for that pass, which uh, the name evades me at the minute, considering it's one of my favourites. I should know the name, but I don't. I'm sure Carsten Will is screaming in his corner there for him to turn and pass. There we go. We can hear him saying, push the knee, push the knee. Now what he's done is he's passed one leg. The other one is still stuck. It's a loose half guard as Dewis rolls onto his side. Looks for that lockdown. There it is. The lockdown is particularly restrictive. Really pulls the hips of your opponent in. Agando's going to need to get that ankle out, but with dying seconds at around left. We're going to go to round two. He's just going to move on and sit that one out. We talked about strategies, I mean, flawless from Agando really, as soon as he got the takedown he was able to work from the top position, didn't take a lot of damage and didn't really exert himself massively, you didn't see him posturing up and throwing down a, a load of ground and pound, he's aware of the fact that this is a tournament format and like you say, yeah. if he's looking at taking people down and controlling, he needs to be mindful of, like you say, of, of budgeting, shall we say, the, the gas tank. As he certainly looks happy with himself as we go into round two. Let's see if uh, John Dewis has got anything to answer that and advance forward. So Dewis out of the blue corner in the black shorts. It is Agendo out of the red corner in the white shorts. Dewis snapping off a nice kick. Beautiful, okay. beautiful jab there from Agendo. Perfectly timed takedown. And again, he's on the mat. Real drive, and as you say, this is something you've got to be careful of. Obviously, in these tournaments, these, these fast paced, aggressive scrambles really will burn the gas tank quickly. Both these guys bringing impressive amateur records into the ring. Do is two and two, again, do three and three. A good draw to have, really, these two. This is a, turning out to be a cracking first fight of the last man standing tournament. Gando has got the takedown position there and just landing a few short knees there. Giving his opponent something else to think about and obviously scoring as well, controlling the position. Dewis doing very well there to stay standing and doing a Michael Jackson S splits there, really dropping his hips to try and bring his base out. But Gandhi's got that single leg ankle pick, pulled him down, 
Dewis working a high guard there, high rubber with one, one ankle. Again, Dewis down. We've seen him very confident passing guards, so uh, we'll see what he does with this. He's got to be careful that he doesn't get his right arm caught. And you've got shoulder lock options, Goga Plata, all sorts of stuff from here. Using his head very effectively there. Did you see that? Very good. Had positioning. Wall walk coming in maybe from John Dewis, but again, just doing the right thing by holding on a little bit at the bottom, pulling his man. I like the fact that short movements, we talked about that throughout this fight. And again, for me, did a really nice job of just pulling his man backwards a tiny bit. Referee Leon Roberts obviously wants to see a bit more action. Stands the two fighters up. Yeah. Mr. Roberts there, he does like a bit of action, doesn't he? Straight in. Agandu, underhooks, dropping down low, going for the weight. Dewis, sprawling out, basing out with his legs again. Great wrestling defence there. Really nice the way he's rolling over and grabbing his underhooks. So we've seen a lot of good wrestling tonight so far on the undercard earlier, Ben. It's impressive seeing the amateur scene shift so much. Agandu again takes that single leg pick from that uh, pin position against the cage wall. And Dewis again going, trying to go high with the guard. And this time he's looking for a, a Kimura. Looking to try and pry some space on that side there. He's got to be mindful of the fact that he is giving up the position. And these shorter fights, obviously, two-minute rounds as they, they two, three-minute rounds, excuse me, as they are booked in this tournament. Surely do has got to be looking for something pretty big here. He's got to, yeah. Agundu has been uh, grinding away, like you said. He was your strategist that you sided with at the beginning of this. I mean, this that this is a good tournament style. I mean, that grinding. Get yourself in there. Don't take a lot of damage. Dictate the position. Realistically, you've got to look at the fact that Agando's done a lot there in, that, in those two rounds. You'd, you'd have to think that uh, there's a chance of it uh, this being in. That's it, yeah. And if it is, you know, the winner's on their way towards a two grand prize and the uh, the runner-up is going home with, what was it, 25 quid in their pocket? I think bus fare home, basically, isn't it? And a tankard. Yeah. Boss fair home and a, and a drink at the bar afterwards, which is, you know, better than the day could have gone for some. OK, ladies and gentlemen, after two rounds of action, we go to our judges' scorecards, and our judges have rendered a unanimous decision. All three judges scoring the contest third, uh, sorry, 2018 in favour of your winner. From the red corner, Jeff Argendo. And Jeff advances into the semi-finals. But let's hear a very warm round of applause for a very gallant challenger. Let's hear it for John Dewis. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, our second quarter-final of the evening. And the first fighter to enter the octagon into the blue corner. Let's hear it for Saul Boy. Okay, here I am with Saul Boyd. Saul is also fighting in the tournament this evening. Saul fights out of Pariah in Birmingham and is currently 4-0 and is also a veteran of Fight UK. Saul, how are you doing today, mate? All right, thanks. I'm good, yeah. Excellent, excellent. You, you fought on the last show, yeah. obviously victorious. Yeah. You're 4-0, you're undefeated at the moment. You're going in the tournament tonight, obviously a little bit of a different format yeah. than you're used to. How have you prepared for this, Saul? Well, I've just obviously trained all around wrestling, jiu-jitsu, striking. I haven't really got a game plan, obviously, because because I don't know who I'm fighting yet. So I'm just going to take it as it comes. I'm happy all round, so. Excellent. Well, obviously, like I said, you're undefeated. Yeah. Uh, you're from a good team, Pariah. We've had many of your guys on Fight UK yeah. before, or generally always victorious, so you've got a good pedigree there. So we are expecting some big things from yeah. you. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, um, you know, uh, you know, fighting three fights in one night, um, how do you think that's going to affect the way the first couple of fights go? Are you going to go all out, balls to the wall, or are you going to try and, you know? I don't know, I'll just, I'm happy anywhere, like, I'm fit enough anyway to take it wherever it comes. So Excellent. At any pace, I'm happy. Exactly. Well, that's the attitude that we love. So, look, Saul, uh, you know, you're looking in good shape once again. I'm expecting some big things from you tonight, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the cage Thank later. You. And his opponent entering into the red corner. Let's hear it for Richard Herbert. 
Okay, here I am with Richard Herbert, the herbalizer. He trains out of Charles Martin Martial Arts in Doncaster. Um, he's coming off a victory on the fight, last fight UK show. Currently has a record of nine wins and two losses, and tonight is fighting in our tournament. Richard, how are you doing today, mate? Yeah, great, thanks, mate. Excellent, excellent. Coming off a great win on the last show. Um, did you get straight back in the gym? Did you have any time off? Yeah, yeah, I've been straight back into it. I mean, I fought again a couple, like four weeks ago. So, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, so it's been manic again, really busy this year. So it's been really good, yeah, training been going really well. Good man. Well, look, I mean, you've had 11 fights now, which is a very, very uh, good experience, damn it, a record. How do you think that's going to fare you tonight when you're going into potentially fighting three times in one night? Uh, I think it'll definitely go in, in my favour because I say I know I've, I've got a lot of experience. I mean, I've fought in a four-man tournament before as well, so I've had to do two fights in one night before as well. And like I say, I've uh, gone the distance as well, you know, so both my fights from the distance, so... I think cardio wise should definitely be on my side as well, at least against uh, a lot of the guys. I'm not sure exactly how hard how, how this one their fights have been, but like I say, you know, I definitely think it's in my favour. Excellent. Well, look, I mean, Nadia, you're brimming with self confidence, mate. And, you know, you look in very, very good physical shape. So, you know, you, like I say, it's going to be a long night ahead of you. So, basically, all that's left to say, mate, is look best to look for tonight. We'll look forward to seeing what you can do later on this evening. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing these fighters properly. Fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Birmingham. He's 21 years old. Stands 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 151 pounds. He fights for Pariah and has a perfect mixed martial arts record of four contests with four wins. Let's hear it for Better Call Saul Boy! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Doncaster. He's 20 years old, stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, and weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Charles Martin, martial arts, and has a fantastic mixed martial arts record of 11 contests, 9 wins and 2 losses. Let's hear it for Richard, the Herbalizer. Herbert! This contest is fought over two three-minute rounds with a potential for three-minute overtime. Right, Ben, so we are back in action. Last man standing, Sol Boyd, Richard Herbert. Boyd in the grey shorts, fighting out of the blue corner. Herbert fighting in the black shorts, coming out of the red corner. I'm excited about this one. Both these guys carrying fantastic records in at amateur level exactly what this tournament's all about high level amateur guys coming in at lightweight a real power struggle here on the clinch both guys exchanging positions Boyd who's pushing his man and then Herbert looking to reverse a nice takedown from Boyd Boyd with a perfect professional record 4-0 Herbert 9-2 so really top level amateur guys here yeah I mean I've, I've you know these guys have got more experience than some of the pros on the circuit at the moment and I've got to be honest with you, these are two guys that I would have tipped to see in the semi-final, dash the final maybe. So interesting to see them square off, you know, in the early stages of this competition. And they're both going to know this. They're both going to know that they secretly could have done with fighting each other later on in the competition. So we come back to tactics, don't we? As Boyd posts up on top, looking to sink the inverted guillotine. Not going to happen. Herbalizer sitting there. Trying to claim half guard, he's got it. Is it locked? No, it's closed, but it's not locked. Boyd on top, just looking to ride out this initial storm. Maybe pepper a few shots if he can. Keep the referee from standing him off. Very active from both guys in this position. And as we saw in the previous fight, where Jeff Agendo went through, obviously this format, two three-minute rounds. If you can get out there and implement a good game plan early on, take that first round, you're halfway there. Absolutely, yeah, I agree with you thoroughly. It's interesting. I mean, Herbert's style is so awkward. He just looks like he's just not bothered, and then he just snaps things out of the bag. You know, very well versed, very strong wrestling, very good sub game. Nice big shot from the top there. Boyd posting up here, looking to do some damage, looking to hurt his man. Another big shot. I like that he's using his posture well with that. He's not committing too much, but he's still in that range where he can land those strikes. And straight on the top, good scramble here. 
And going for the back, swam that arm round. Now he's secured, he's secured Herbert's right underhook shoulder there. So what's he going to do with it? Are we going to see him use that to anchor himself and post up so he can sink that right hook in, which is what he needs to get the rear choke in? Or is he going to start looking to, to anchor that shoulder and do something else with it? He's got to be mindful he doesn't get reversed in this position as well. Don't want to end up on the bottom, especially in a fight like this. These two rounds shorter. Yeah, it's exactly what's happened there. Again, cursor to come. Oh, nearly happened. Not quite happened yet, no. Oh, I'd like to see electric chair from here, wouldn't you, Ben? Could you imagine that? A nice electric chair submission in the early stages of an amateur tournament. That would be unheard of. You'd call Ringer at that point, I think. Yeah, sorry about that. There we go. But Great. that was exciting. That was a very, very fast-paced round. We're going to go to the second round now. Interesting because Herbert, like I said, is this lacks the daisical style. He almost seems not bothered. He's got to be bothered. He's got to get in there, be first and be quick. There he is, underhooks. Nice turn from Boyd. A nice clipping right out from Boyd as they initially engaged as well. Gave his man something to think about. Herbert locking that leg. He needs to try and just nip that posting arm, and he's done that. Great balance here from Herbert. Good control from Boyd there. He's done well out of this position. He's on top. I mean, realistically, like I said, I had either of these two personally tipped to get through to the semis, if not the final. So I'm going to totally change my, uh, my ideas of who I think I'm going to see in the final after the end of this fight. You've got to think as well, though, both guys... If they've got that belief that they can get there, they're both in there, they've got great records, as we see the reversal from here, but if both guys have got the belief in themselves that they can do this, then mentally they'll be ready to fight the tough guys, because if they're going to win it, they're going to have to beat them anyway. But like yeah. you say, it, it, it's tough. You, you maybe want to fight a tougher guy and, and take the chance that he'd had a harder route to get there than you. If you're fighting both completely fresh, first fight of the evening, it's the toughest potential fight for both of these guys at the moment. You're absolutely right. I don't think they would have really expected this. However... This is what's happening. So Boyd, he's got that left butterfly leg in, and he's, uh, again, deliberately trying to make me look silly by changing that and bringing it around to full close guard. Overhook on Herbert's right arm. Herbert sitting up, firing some sh shots down. This is what he needs to do. He needs to make something of this time on top. There's a real case that he lost that first round with the positioning with the strike, and if he wins this one, we could be headed to a sudden victory round. Yeah, I would agree with that, Ben. Another huge shot coming in. Really measured that one, Herbert. And that being, was, the, being the slightly taller fighter, he's putting himself in shots where he can hit his opponent and his opponent can't hit him. Yeah, you're right. I mean, sitting up in guard and striking, looking to get some damage on Boyd to try and reclaim some shots. He's passed one leg. Boyd has walked back in and took half guard. It's relatively open. Herbert's not bothered. He just, he just wants to hurt him. He just wants to fire some shots down and get some damage back. I think he's uh, under the understanding that, you know, there's not enough time left to really finish him with a submission, so he wants to damage him, wants to pin, control, remain the remainder of the round on top and fire some shots down. And we talked earlier as well about conditioning, obviously, as we see the reversal. As I Very say, that good. Boyd ends up on top. Ten right seconds to death. go. Needs to do a lot here, really. Try and get his man out of there. Doesn't look like he's going to get the opportunity to. End of the second round. We'll wait to see the judges' scorecards tallied up to see if we've got a winner or to see if we're going to a sudden victory round. Judges just collating the cards now. And we are going to a sudden victory round for the first time this evening. One more round. That's it. To decide this one. Good call. I think that's the perfect decision. Correct. So many yeah. things when you look at tournament fighting make a, a, a huge difference. They may only seem like little things. But if yeah. you put a minute here, a 30 seconds there, it all adds up when you're fighting multiple times in one evening. And you oh. made the very good point. You've got to warm up. You've got to cool down. It all affects your, your own kind of personal schedule. The crowd are loving this third round now. Oh, nice knees to the body there. 
Good work from Herbert, really bullying his man now, trying to impose his will, seeing if he can get the takedown. Really straining both these guys. Soul Boyd's oh. ended up on top there for the takedown. They're both battling for that position with the underhook in place. Nice knees to the body there. Those could really pay dividends on a fight like this. Yeah, you're right there, Ben. Knees to the body. Everyone just looks and goes, oh, that can't hurt much. I tell you, I've, I have seen, I have seen men stop. I have seen men cry from knees to the body. Herbert goes to ride the back. Now, this is interesting because his right arm is stuck. And Boyd lets go of it. Herbert's gone through. He's working the rear choke. Herbert's got the position harder to complete the choke, obviously, under these amateur rules, simply because the size of gloves, but that looks very tight from here. He has got that locked in. What a hard show from Saul Boyd to fight the hands at this point. And he's still trying to work the feet. Look, he was hoping that Herbert's ankles were crossed there. Look to work an ankle bar. I mean, that shows the professionalism there. Someone that can sit there and be choked by somebody with an 11 fight record, and whilst having that happen, still defend the ankles. He's out, he's out. He is out cold. Great pickup from Leon Roberts there. Yep. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner. So there we see Richard Herbert advances. And so Boyd, what heart. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 26 seconds of round number three, your winner due to tap out by rear naked choke from the red corner, Richard, the Herbalizer, Herbert. But well, let's hear it for a fantastic challenger. Let's hear it for Saul Boyd. Okay, our third quarter final of the evening. And the first fighter to enter the octagon into the blue corner. Let's hear it for Jake Ocean. Hi, here, here I am with Jake Ocean. Uh, Jake is fighting in our tournament this evening, potentially fighting three times. Um, he's trained out of uh, Sakata MMA and has travelled all the way from Tamworth. Jake, how are you doing today? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm very well indeed, thanks. Now, Jake, you're currently 8-2, uh, obviously entering into the tournament tonight. Um, obviously, a bit of a different format to what you're used to fighting. Yeah, of obviously, you've had 10 fights before, so you're, you're experienced. Yeah. But tonight could be three fights in one night. How have you prepared for that? Uh, I've had my strength and conditioning. I've, uh, I've done, obviously, longer rounds. Uh, shorter intervals in between. I've done more rolling with different weights uh, just to get used to constantly on the go and constantly moving. I find, you know, I, I think I'll be well conditioned for this. I'm in the best shape I've been in, so I look forward to it. Excellent. Now, obviously, you know, there's no such thing as a game plan for a tournament because you don't know who you're fighting yet, and like you say, you could have three fights. So, obviously, I'm assuming you're going in there just to play to your strengths. So, where do you where do you think where do you see where do you, where do you see your strengths being? Is it the stand up, the ground, or are you not really that bothered? I'm not that bothered. My, my game plan is simple. I just want to be better than the other guy. So, I go out there, I do that, and can't go far wrong. Excellent. Well, look, that's the attitude that we like. Uh, you know, you seem very very keen. You're in good shape. So, we're expecting some big big things from you tonight. Yeah. So, we look forward to seeing you in the cage yeah, this evening, brilliant. Jake. And his opponent. Entering into the red corner, let's hear it for Harry Marple. Okay, here I am with Harry Marble. Harry is an excellent undefeated mixed martial artist, currently at 8 0, and he trains out of Team Cowbon in the Midlands. And tonight he is fighting in our uh, tournament. Harry, how are you doing today, mate? I'm good, mate, thank you. Excellent. Well, Harry, I mean, I don't really know much about you, to be honest with you, but your record speaks for itself, 8 0. Obviously, a very, very strong candidate uh, for the tournament. Uh, I know a lot about uh, some of the guys you train with, though. Obviously, uh, Team Cowbon Midlands, you're under Paul Taylor there, yeah? Yeah. Who's obviously ex UFC, etc. Um, now, obviously, uh, you could be fighting three times tonight. How do you think that's uh, how do you think that's going to affect you? Uh, it's an interesting one, but I've got quite a relaxed style, so I think it works for me. It's going to work in my favour. Good man, good. good man. Now, um, obviously, there's no such thing as a game plan for a tournament. You could be fighting anybody. You could be fighting three yeah. times. Um, you know, tell me about your strengths. Uh, I'm an all-rounder, so wherever it goes, I'm I'm happy. So it's. A, like I say, my style's quite relaxed, so I've got the cardio to go for it. So, and like I say, I don't know who I'm coming up against, so just, just scrap, man. Well, to be perfectly honest, the word relaxed is probably the best word I would use to describe you. Because of everybody I've interviewed today, you seem very, very chilled, very, very up for it, and you've got a little cheeky grin and a little bit of a glint in your eye. So I'm expecting big things from you tonight, Harry. So all that's really left to say, mate, is best of luck, and I look forward to seeing what you're going to do later. Lovely, top man. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing these fighters properly. Fighting out of the blue corner, he hails from Tamworth. He's 24 years old, stands 5 feet 7 inches tall, and weighed in at 151 pounds. He fights for Sukata MMA and has a fantastic mixed martial arts record of 10 contests, 8 wins and 2 losses. Let's hear it for Jake the Wonder Man Ocean! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Canuck. He's 23 years old. Stands six feet one inch tall and weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Team Cowbon Midlands and has a perfect mixed martial arts record of eight contests with eight victories. Let's hear it for Dirty Harry Amapo. This contest is fought over two three minute rounds with a potential three minute overtime. So third fight in the opening bracket here of the last man standing lightweight tournament. We have Jake Ocean from Sukata in the blue shorts against Harry Marple from Team Cowbon in the black shorts. Jake Ocean with an 8-2 record, Harry Marple with an 8-0 record. Once again, we said it in the last fight, two guys who could easily, easily be very good, strong picks to make the finals meet here in the open round. It just goes to show how much depth there is in this tournament. You're right there, Ben. And interestingly there, we see Ocean going for the rear suplex originally on, uh, on Marple. Nice switch. Some hammer fist from Marple. I like that, giving his man something else to think about. Not quite so keen on finishing that takedown when the shots come raining in. Nice knee to the body. And Harry Marple, a guy I've seen fight a couple of times, very impressed with him, a real hot prospect, this kid. Be interested to see how well he fights in this tournament format. Looks like he's got the neck there. Sits in, doesn't quite get it, but ends up on top, which is obviously important, as we've seen earlier tonight in these tournament matches. He's relentlessly trying to work this arm. I think he's going to try and use pure leverage and strength to, to secure shoulder lock, Kimura key lock of some description. Is he going to use it as an anchor point to go hooks? But no, now Ocean switched it, and Ocean is attacking Marple's arm. But Ocean uses that Kimura to sweep. Beautiful. Straight back up to the feet. And as exciting as fast pacing and as great fight this is to watch this really isn't the type of fight you want to have if you're in a tournament not really no we can see there marple's arm is deep ocean has gone deep down onto his arm and he pulls out an escape brilliant escape there from marple that was fantastic i was a bit worried there for a moment marple being tall for this weight division has got the adva advantage as i say that triangle attempt a huge slam out of it got to watch that left arm but it's out it's safe now he's utilising that height, that reach advantage. At six foot one, he's one of the tallest lightweights. Slapping on over the triangle again, but once again, with that height comes that good posture. Yeah. And the legs have really got to go a long way up to get over the top of his head. I like Marple's game here from the top. Putting himself in spots where he can hit his opponent, and his opponent has a hard time hitting him. We've seen it earlier tonight. It's a very smart way to fight. It's the science of fighting. It is. We're all having to do it now because all these camps are, are just they're cross training so well. Accidental shot there. I think that's. I think, it was, a, I think it was a headbutt. Headbutt or an eye poke? Headbutt. Yep. Obviously that is illegal, but Ocean will be given time to recuperate there. I think Mark Water just looking to assess the position here. Yeah, Mark would I'd ask him if he wants to carry on. The answer is always yes. It's a trick question. As I say, complete accident. Oh. Brief break, break in the action there. A big shot from Ocean there. Looks to get the double, can't quite get it. Ocean trying to utilize that height disadvantage to his benefit, shooting in for a takedown. Like I said earlier, um, you know, the, the, the shorter you are, the, the easier your wrestling game is. But Marple stuffed it. Picking now, that leg away. He's going to look to control, pin and hold. Couple of shots to finish on. Nice little chopping leg kick there. 
Mansa top, and that's the end of the round. Just the one incident there from Mark Woodard's point of view. He dealt with that very well, spotted that headbutt, gave the fire every chance to continue, and obviously he wanted to. Complete accident there. These things happen. No one is in this game, and to do that maliciously, you know, it is it is accidental. The the heat of the heat of the moment, or the throws of passion, whichever way you look at it, these things do happen. Second round, great back and forth first encounter between Jake Ocean in the blue and Harry Marple in the black. Big leg here, but that sounded a bit low. Was that off the cob? There we go. No, they didn't even need a ref, these two. Just talking to themselves. That was a low blow. Sorry about that. No worries. Let's carry on. Mark Woodard might as well just, you know, grab some popcorn, bring up a seat and just watch. It speaks volumes about the level of amateur experience, as you said there, with these guys. Ocean coming in for the takedown once again. Can't quite get the trip, but great relentless pursuit of this. He's like a little Staffordshire Bull Terrier, isn't he? He's just relentless, just going for your legs. Not letting go. Got through now, but once again, no Marple sitting through on top. Now we're going to see strikes or ankle submission and Ebar. No, he's going to turn. We'll turn in and maybe just look to land a few short shots. And why not if he can whip that left leg over being the mount? But great nice. roll there from Jay Ocean. But ro counter roll against really high level grappling from these mm. two. What you expect from from the Sakata guys and from the Cowbound guys, two of the best gems we've got in the country. Now this is where that half guard lockdown can come in handy for Ocean. You know, you can start to draw the the length, the pure length of Marple's body away from him. But he's going to go open guard, shrimp his hips in and try and work his guard game. As you said, Rather like the last fight, tough draw for both of these guys this early in the proceedings. We say that, but there's no bums in this amateur competition. I mean, they're all tough, really. It's the only way it was ever going to go from the start. There's no easy ride here. You know, we've already seen Ocean. some very good fighters go home. He's and got the tap. tap. Unbelievable. Ch Marple works the shoulder choke. Shoulder choke for that position. Looked just like pressure. Didn't really seem like it there was did. any danger of tapping. Ocean was looking to try and reverse through the side. But Marple put the put the pressure on, got the tap, and advances through to the next round. And First I'll be honest with you, he's going to take some stopping. He is, yeah. I agree with that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. After one minute and 59 seconds of round number two, your winner, due to a tap out by Das Choke, and advancing to the next round from the red corner, Dirty Harry Marple. But let's hear it for a very worthy challenger. Let's hear it for Jake Ocean. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, our final quarter final fight of the evening. <laughs> and the first fighter to enter the octagon into the blue corner. Let's hear it for Rob Viles. OK, here I am with Rob Viles. Rob's another one of our tournament challengers this evening. He trains out of Kettering Shoot Fighters and is currently undefeated at 3 and 0. Oh. Rob, how are you doing today, mate? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Yourself? I'm um, very well indeed, thank you. Um, obviously, uh, you're uh, undefeated at the moment, 3 and 0, oh, but tonight you could even go 6 and 0, oh, potentially fighting three times in one night. Tell me a little bit about your preparation there, Rob. We've just been just been doing what we normally do, really, just up in the rounds, uh, turning up to five minute rounds, sort of doing double what we'll be doing in the tournament, just so I'm fully, fully fit for it, fully training for it. Excellent. Now, obviously, there's no such thing as a game plan for this because you know you could be fighting anybody, you could be fighting three people. Um, obviously, uh, tell me about your strengths. Where do you want to? Where do you want the fight to go? I, I'm happy wherever it is. To be honest, I'm not. I'm not like a, a massively into the into the game. I'm just. I just like to be in there, basically. I'm not bothered where it goes. So I'm happy wherever it goes. OK, so, good man. Well, listen, like I say, there's very little left to say. Um, obviously, you got a lot of... You, you want to go and get yourself a bit of a chill-out before we start. Yeah, so I wish you the best of luck, and we'll see you in the cage later, Rob. And his opponent entering into the red corner. Let's hear it for Sam Wilkinson. 
Okay, here I am with Sam Wilkinson. Sam is fighting in our tournament this evening. He trains out of AVT in Doncaster and currently holds a record of eight wins and one loss. Sam, how are you doing today, mate? Really good, yeah, yeah, feeling good and glad to be here. Excellent, excellent. Well, couple of things. I mean, firstly, you're fighting in the tournament tonight. So, obviously, first thing, how's preparation for that gone? It's been good. I've just had a fight like a month ago. I built off the fitness from that, so everything's been good and I feel good, I feel fit, probably the best shape of my life, so you can't kind of argue with that. I feel like it's going to take me through tonight. Excellent. Now, obviously, you, you train with a, re a really good team up there in Doncaster, um, obviously headed up by Danny Mitchell, currently fighting in the UFC, yeah. who's a fantastic jiu-jitsu practitioner. Yeah. Um, I would assume that your ground game's on point, yeah? It's rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> So no, but where do you, well, I mean obviously look, you could be having three fights tonight, yeah. so I would assume that you're looking to play to your strengths and not the opponents. What? So where, do, where, where would you prefer the fight to happen? What I'm looking forward to doing is just, think, with me people kind of don't realise I, I am a mixed martial artist first and foremost, I'm not just like a guy who's going to try and take you down and lay on you, even though I might have done that a couple of times. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to just be a mixed martial artist and just fight everywhere. I think that is how I'm going to win tonight because if you keep my opponent like off guard, he doesn't be able to get off his offense, and it's what it's about, and it. I've got to act so he can't react. Yeah, put the pressure on. Well, look, I mean, physically, you look in really, really good shape, and you sound mentally, you sound very, very well prepared, very determined. You've got a big smile on your face. We really, really love that. So all that's left to say, mate, is look, best of luck for this evening, and we'll look forward to you showcasing your skills in the cage tonight. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. introducing the fighters properly. Fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Kettering. He's 25 years old, stands five feet eight inches tall, and weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Kettering Shoot Fighters and has a perfect mixed martial arts record of three contests with three wins. Let's hear it for Rob Abiles. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Hull. He's 20 years old, stands five feet seven inches tall, and weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for AVT and has a fantastic mixed martial arts record of nine contests, eight wins with one loss. Let's hear it for Sam, the thinking man, a Wilkinson. This contest is fought over two three-minute rounds with a potential three-minute overtime. Okay, so Sam Wilkinson in the red corner, yellow shorts, Rob Virals in the blue corner, black shorts, Virals bringing three wins, no losses, Wilkinson bringing eight wins, one loss. Fantastic match here. We go in to another round of the last man standing, the lightweights, high kicks coming from Virals. Winner of this fight to meet Harry Marple in the next round semi-finals. Certainly no easy task for either of these guys. Great striking it displayed there from Wilkinson, really snapping those shots off. And the tournament format, this with with so many really tough guys, it almost perfectly suits the the ethos of the guys up there at, at AVT. They've got this real attitude that they'll they'll fight anybody, and they always turn up to to really kind of give anybody a struggle and, and Sam Wilkinson 8-1, and one, one of the best records in the tournament could really, really look to do something here tonight as he whistles that left hand past his man yeah, you're absolutely right 8-1 and one is an impressive record to have 3-0 oh. I mean Rob's no slouch here he's, he's coming in was taking centre of the ring now Wilkinson's sort of advancing, trying to work his guy out. I mean, both these guys, both coming in, what we've got? Viral's coming in at 5'8", uh, Wil uh, Wilkerson 5'7", as he stuffs the takedown attempt, but will he finish? Viral's coming in, looking for that leg. He's got one arm, the second arm is not able to, to lock round to, to utilise full control of that leg. Wilkerson doing well there, pushes his man out, but great control as he spins. Viral's there. Working double underhooks, will be see overhook lockdown. Viles gets the trip throw. Wilkinson takes the momentum, continues the roll, and maintains control. So he stuffed the takedown. He's on top. Nice knee to the body there from side control. Really underutilized weapon that. Yeah, they do hurt I me. Mean, that's where the floating ribs are located. Now I only got a B in biology, but I do know that 
they're not connected to either the front or the back of your body and they're the easiest ones to break they're the ones that are going to hurt and that will literally stop you in your tracks Wilkinson maintaining top control side control landing a few strikes doing enough I'll be honest, very polite cornering here in, uh, for Rob Vile. I just heard his, he's going, get up, please. I mean, I, 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 never, I'm ne I never say please and thank you when I'm cornering. <laughs> Maybe I should try doing that. Here we go. There's the turn attempt. That is fantastic. How is Wilkinson? He's like a cat, but he's over. Now Viles is on top, dropping his hip. Ten-second clack has gone. Is it enough time to get something? Last stab in the dark. No. But he got the turn, he got the control. That will be a little that'll be a bit of a knock for Wilkinson, who did really control quite well from that position from the minute it went down. Round Second round. round. Wow, look at that sidestep from Wilkinson. We don't see that very often. Virals with a really aggressive start. Obviously, his corner had a word with him. Let him know there's a good chance he lost that round. A big pick up and dump from Wilkinson, who maintains the top control and looking to pick up where he left off. All bit before the sweep. Yeah, that was uh, Wilkerson came out very aggressive then. Almost angered. How dare you try and reverse my control in the last few seconds of that round? I will show you, you nasty, nasty man. And so he's on top, keeping his arms in, keeping down. He knows he's at risk for an armbar triangle attempt. If he gives an arm away, he's going to look to post up. The guard is open ish as he goes, rubber guard goes high. And we see quite a few people, quite a few guys in this tournament adopt this style, a, a lower risk strategy. And we, we alluded to, obviously, a, a very big purse for, for a, an amateur tournament. I mean, do you think that's got anything to do with fighters adopting this style, or looking at a, maybe a lower risk fight strategy? I think you're absolutely right, Ben, yeah. I mean, I, personally, I don't like it because it... it you know, you're effectively leaving it up to the judges. There's not enough time. And like you said earlier, you know, one takedown can be the difference between winning and losing the round. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure Sol, you know, Sol Boyd will be uh, wishing he changed his tactic earlier and other fighters that, you know, went the distance. Well, Sol didn't go the distance, but, you know, they went the distance and uh, you're adamant you've got it, but you're not the judges. You're not seeing it from the judges' perspective, you know. So it, it is, it's low risk in terms of of damage and gas tank, you know, it's it's very sort of slowly, slowly, but it's high risk in terms of the decision. And it's very difficult to score as well. You know, you're looking at technical bouts and it's half guard. Did he pass half guard? You know, has he reclaimed that full guard? Is that worth more than his half guard pass? It's the short, it's the shorter rounds. Mm. From, from a judge's point of view, in all honesty, amateur fights are much harder to judge than professional fights because you've got less time to observe less techniques. Absolutely When you're right. looking at a pro fight, you've got five-minute rounds, you've got all the techniques the fighters can use. There's generally something there to separate them. When you're looking at these amateur fighters, mm -hmm. there's less that they can do and there's less time they can do it. As we say, that's a yeah, nice ground right. and pound from Wilkinson, working from inside the guard, standing up and landing strikes. I mean, you know, look at what we've seen so far. Takedown, takedown, defence, some great stand-up, albeit very brief. Guard passing, submission attempt, striking from guard, half guard, you know, reversals. It's, there's just so much going on. And again, I say it again and again, but it's testament to amateur level MMA in this country. As Wilkinson postures up, he knows the clock's ticking. He knows the clock's ticking and he wants that two grand. Again, high guard there, looking for rubber guard there from Virals. Not enough. We're going to go to the judges' scorecard. If the judges see that it's one round apiece, then we'll go sudden victory. If not, then we'll get a decision. Judges just collating the cards. Great performance from both guys. Sam Wilkinson, for me, really pushing the pace, especially in that second round. We're just waiting for the decision to come in. And it looks like there won't be a third round, so we'll hand it over to our resident MC, Mr. Andy Sledge, for the judges' verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner. Uh, let's have a round of applause for both warriors. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 
After two rounds of hard-fought action, we go to our judges' scorecards. All three judges have rendered a unanimous decision, scoring about 2018 in favour of your winner from the red corner, Sam, the thinking man, a Wilkinson. Well, let's hear it for a very gallant challenger. Let's hear it for Rob Viles. This means that Sam advances to the next round and will face Dirty Harry Marple in the semi-final. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Nottingham. He's 25 years old, stands five feet nine inches tall, weighed in at 152 pounds. He fights for Archer MMA and has a mixed martial arts record of seven contests, four wins and three losses. Let's hear it for Jeff Ogendo. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Doncaster. He's 20 years old, stands five feet nine inches tall and weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Charles Martin Martial Arts and has a fantastic mixed martial arts record of 12 contests, 10 wins and two losses. Let's hear it for Richard, the Herbalizer Herbert. This contest is fought over two three minute rounds with a potential three minute overtime. Okay, so back with the last man standing tournament. We're into the semi finals. Richard Herbert in the red corner, black shorts. Jeff Agando in the blue corner, white shorts. Agendo from Archer MMA. Herbert from Charles Martin MMA. Ben, this is when this is this is when it really gets real, isn't it? Certainly, we've had some fantastically high level opening round bouts in the tournament. But this is where we're down to the final four. Jeff Agando looked great and showed top control in his fight. Getting through to this semi-final. And Richard Herbert from Charles Martin. Another guy who got the takedown and was able to really dictate a, a crushing kind of a pace. First of our two semi-finals. Good, good match, this one. Um, again, he ground his way through to victory, didn't he? In the uh, preliminaries. And uh, Herbert had that third round, didn't he? And pulled it out of the bag. As he usually does. Two very interesting styles collide. And there can be but one result. Jeff Agando very light on his feet, I'm noticing. I mean, an orthodox kind of stance. He's not in one spot, he's moving around quite a lot. He's picking his spots before he lands, and Richard Herbert there. He's great he's left hook around the corner. Struggling to close him down. We've seen Herbert try and step in and close him down a couple of times. Now he's changing his tactic to strike him. We saw him drop his shoulder earlier, trying to run in and, and take control. That wasn't working. So the striking seems to work now. Now again, though, he's answering. We're coming off the side of the ring and working strikes of his own. Oh, it's a nice uppercut from Jeff. That was nice. Excellent uppercut set up nicely, but Herbert answered back with a nice clean jab, caught him clean as he came in. Really even exchanges these. Herbert moving his head. Oh, nice man. left hook there from Herbert. Really tagged his man with that shot. And there it is again. That's the shot, surely. Interesting, we haven't gone down yet. Quite content, stand and bang. Body shot, leg kick. Richard Herbert really pushing the pressure now. Got the middle of the... Got the middle of the cage and looking to make a lot out of it. Really back and forth round this. Nice leg kick to finish on the break. And once again. Oh, and there's that left hook, lead left hook. Herbert turning it on, but that really was anybody's round. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm looking over at the judges and <laughs> their facial expressions just say it all, really. The crowd are geared up. Gendo's corner urging him, we've got to win this round, Jeff. And they're absolutely right. Nice leg kick there from Herbert, snapping it off. The danger is, from my perspective, Ben, if this happens again, and this second round goes the way the first one did, it's going to have to go to a third round. And this is where Richard Herbert comes alive. We've seen it with him time and time again. He's a late starter. A bit like me in the mornings. The technique I've developed over the years. Real scramble for position here. Both guys almost hesitant to pull the trigger. Standing in the pocket there, throwing some, throwing some shots, but just unable to find that one big shot as Richard Herbert leans in. Looked like he was going for that guillotine. Good head positioning from Jeff and Herbert. Delegates down and knees to the body. Excellent body positioning from Herbert. Another nice one. Still in this clinch position. Herbert landing knees to the legs. Effective and painful. Not necessarily fight finishing, but they are effective. Another one still working. That left leg. Good call there from referee Leon Roberts. Breaks. Herbert circling in. Again, there's really got to make something happen here, surely. Yeah. Herbert knows it as well. That clinch might be enough to just differentiate ever so slightly, and that's what the judges are looking for. Again, has got to really open up. Herbert's caught him, come in with a big knee to the body. Oh, another, another big nice knee. one. Again, those going in for that takedown. If he gets it, we're back to square one. Can't quite grasp the hands together. That's some good takedown defense. Excellent. Great work from Richard Herbert there. And now he's the man in the position as he had, pushing his opponents back to the cage, landing, chipping away with shots to the body like he did before with knees to the legs. This is a very, very, very clever game plan from Richard Herbert. Can't fault the logic at all. Nice knee to the body, that was a big one. And that was another one. That one hurt again though, that one definitely hurt him. He's coming in, his arm is controlled. Herbert's got top position. Series of huge knees. And that is it. That looks like that is all she wrote. What a performance for Richard Herbert in that second turned it on. Well, that first round was close. Difficult to see where this goes from here. First round was too close. That could go anywhere. Herbert turned it up for me in the second round, but we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. Just collating the scorecards now for the to see if there's going to be a third round. It doesn't look like there is. That's no, it. that's it. Hand it over. There's a lot of money on the line here, so those judges must be sure. Hand it over to our MC, Andy Sledge, who has the judge's decision. We go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges render a unanimous decision, scoring about 2018 in favour of your winner and advancing to the final from the red corner, Richard the Herbalizer Herbert. Well, let's hear it for a very gallant challenger. Let's hear it for... Let's hear it for Jeff Ogendo. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the semi-finalist properly. Fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Canuck. He's 23 years old. Stands 6 feet 1 inch tall. Weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights out of Team Cowbon Midlands and has a perfect mixed martial arts record of nine contests with nine wins. Let's hear it for Dirty Harry Marple. And his 
opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Poland. He's 26 years old, stands five feet seven inches tall, and weighed in at 154 pounds. He fights for Suggy's gym, and also has a perfect record of three contests with three wins. Let's hear it for Christoph Adamczyk. This contest is fought over two three-minute rounds with a potential three-minute overtime. Second semi-final of the evening. Which one of these two fighters is going to advance to the final? To meet Richard Herbert, we have Harry Marple, black shorts, a blue corner fight, our team Cowbon against replacement Christoph Adamczyk, who we saw earlier in the black and white shorts, fan out the red corner with the mohawk. It's Marple straight away looking to set a precedent with his striking. Yeah, we've seen fantastic wrestling from uh, Adamczyk earlier. As I say that, single leg from Adamczyk, straight in. Looking Catches. to link the hands together and he's got him. Double. Got him. Beautiful. Dirty Harry goes down. So unfortunately, Wilkinson with the neck injury earlier means that the reserve fighter, Christopher Damczyk, is in at the semi-finals. Now he has already fought tonight, hence the black eye when he walked in. We haven't just found him off the street. And he uh, had a very, very convincing win earlier. Some superb wrestling. He's massive for a lightweight. Marple needs to operate here on the outside, on the end of his punches. Yeah. Nice single engagement from Adamczyk. It's up. The danger here for Marple is if he plays the clever game, trying to sit outside. If Beautiful. Adamczyk gets his takedowns, he'll score. But that said, Marple's on his back, but Adamczyk has got his left hand under Marple's left leg. Marple's still going for it. He's still going for that rear choke. And he could get it. He could get it from here. If he gets that second hand through, so he, he changes to strike. So much harder with the bigger gloves as we've seen, though. And as I say that, he swept the hand through, and this looks very he's tight. On, he's it. tapped it. Done. And we are left with a final that we did predict earlier, didn't we, Ben? We did indeed. Uh, to the letter. Admittedly, mine was on camera, yours wasn't. Ladies and gentlemen, so we'll just we have, have to believe winner. you. Richard Herbert, Harry Marple is your lightweight final. OK, ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 44 seconds of the very first round, your winner due to a tap out by rear naked choke and advancing to the final from the blue corner, Dirty Harry Marple. Well, let's hear it for a very gallant runner up who stepped in at the last minute. Let's hear it for Christoph Adamczyk. OK, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the finalist properly. Fighting out of the blue corner. He hails from Doncaster. He's 20 years old. Stands 5 feet 9 inches tall. Weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Charles Martin Martial Arts. And has a fantastic record of uh, 13 contests, 11 wins and 2 losses. Let's hear it for Richard the Herbalizer. Herbert! And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. He hails from Canuck. He's 23 years old. Stands six feet one inch tall. Weighed in at 155 pounds. He fights for Team Cowbon and has a perfect mixed martial arts record of 10 contests with 10 wins. Let's hear it for Dirty Harry Marple. This contest is fought over three three-minute rounds. So here we go. What it's been building up to all evening. Ben Cartledge and Lloyd Clarkson here at the final of the Fight UK Last Man Standing Tournament. £2,000 to the winner. We have Richard Herbert. Find out Charles Martin in the black shorts coming out of the blue corner against Cowbond's dirty Harry Marple. In the black and white shorts, red corner, both guys, Lloyd, have looked very impressive this evening. They both have. won two fights to get to this point. It is all on the line here. Absolutely right. They have 
fought tooth and nail to get here. And let's, they're both looking in great shape considering they've just had two fights. There were no slouches in this tournament. There were no easy rides. Even when we had an injury, our bye was, uh, was an incredibly talented wrestler. You know, it, it's, it's phenomenal to see that these guys both walk in with no black eyes, no, you know, you know, no patch up jobs. This says a lot about the standard of amateur MMA in the country at the moment, specifically in this division. Nice uppercut from Marple there. I love the way that he pumped that in on the right hand. Couple of jabs, set it up. Big shots, but the herbalizer being ever the gentleman, slightly high shot there, apologized himself. Look at his timing of the head movement. He's waiting for these shots to come in and he's moving under them, getting in and trying to clinch and hit the body. Can't afford to sit at the end of those range and uh, eat up those shots from Dirty Harry. Nice leg kick from Harry. Changes it up with a one-two and a leg kick on the other side. Herbert slips over as he tries to throw a kick of his own. And in a fight like this, three threes, little mistakes like that can make a huge difference. It all depends on what, what game Harry's looking to play. Is he going to look to go into the guard? He well, didn't have a choice really there. Is that was impressive. Explosion forward from Richard Herbert. That was a fantastic get up there from a potentially bad position. So we go to the clinch. Marple's taking control, Herbert pushing off the wall, driving back on. Real battle of wills this. Double underhooks for Herbert. And again, he starts pummeling, breaks. Interesting, because you don't want to be on the end of those big shots. But look at his head move again. He's not really eating the shots. Six, seven shots thrown there by Dirty Harry, and Herbert moves. Comes in for a body knee. Marples throws one back. Herbert throws one back. Go to the wall, 10 seconds to go. These two are tooth and nail in this round. Oh, they want that two grand, don't they, Ben? No two ways about it. Close, close first round that. It is, but the irony, and I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, we predicted this, didn't we? We predicted this. That's how good we are here at Fight UK. Admittedly, mine was on tapes for the world to, to hear that I actually did say that I thought that either Herbert or Boyd would be in the final. Yours was sneakily off the air, but I'll vouch for you, Ben. Don't worry, you did say, and I quote, that you fancied Harry Marple. Contextualise that one. The there we go. <laughs> Contextualise that one. Beautiful. <laughs> it goes deeper than the two grand, doesn't it, Ben? They don't, at this stage in their career, they don't want the loss on their record. I mean, realistically, you've got to think that both guys, Richard Herbert, 11 and 2, amateur Harry Marple, 10 and 0, amateur. The pro ranks are calling, probably not that far away. Yeah. Um, so a loss here for either wouldn't be the end of the world. However, it's easy for me to say that because if I lose, I'm, I'm not not getting two thousand pounds. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And d for fighters who are looking to go pro, um, we know at the moment as, as, as it is, there's not a great deal of money around it in the UK in the sport. All this all this revenue that these fighters can get makes a huge difference with how feasible it is for them to train and pursue the dream of becoming fighters full time. And uh, who knows? Either of these fighters will, would obviously massively benefit from from uh, from this prize and and. What a great advert for the, the level of amateur MMA in this country. Both of these guys are beautiful uppercut, as I say that from Harry Marple. I love the timing on that. Yeah, he is. You can see him stalking Herbert, waiting for him to come in. But Herbert is a difficult guy to punch in the face. He moves and moves and moves. Nice and kick to the body. There, look. Marple swinging for the fences there. Big shots. Trying to get that leg trip, and he's got it. He's got it. Yeah, you're right, Herbert. He's got to get something out of this. He needs to protect his arms and lock that guard down or go for full guard or do something. You say he's got to, he's got to either be 100% in or 100% out because, as we've said all night, these short rounds, one takedown, we've seen it, we've seen it time and time again this evening. One takedown has stolen a round yeah, more than right. one occasion. You are right. And even here with someone like Herbert, really locking his man down, 
Marple got the takedown, and if he can land a bit of buddy buddy head ground and pound and prevent himself from getting stood back up, that could be a round for him. It could indeed be a round for him in a round that's very close on the exchanges. And there he is, he's doing exactly what you said. Nice couple of shots. Herbert holding on to that. Holding on to that leg like it's the last segment of a Toblerone at Christmas. Ro rolling for a dust choke is Marple. It's in, I can't see from here very, how very deep it is. Looking. It looks deep. That is a tight looking choke. So often we see the, the go to move for guys with long arms. And he abandons it. But Good. he's got the top position as a result of it. That was very, very tight. Richard Herbert did well there. He was in a tough spot. He did, yeah. He did, he did well to actually keep his head connected to his body throughout that, to be honest. Um, so now we're, you know, we're looking up towards the closing stages of round two. And where are we going? I mean, you know, Marple's really opened up in this round, but we know that Herbert can switch it on in the last minute. Very strong finisher, you're right. I'm excited, Ben, I'm excited. It's hard not to be, like I say, a fantastic tournament here at Fire UK, culminating in, on paper at least, probably the two best guys in the tournament meeting in the final. Big prize at stake. Marple comes swinging in. There's a takedown from Herbert. He's going, there you go, judges, have a look at that. I can do this too. Right at the closing stages. Very, not very, very close round of score. You're right, yeah, yeah. right at the death. I... I was it enough? I mean, if you're looking at position-wise, I mean, I haven't got to start watching me or, or checking the times, but Harry Marple had more time on top. How he much did. more is the difference? Also, he, he locked in that uh, that Dars choke that yep. he nearly uh, he, and he, and he's had the better of the positions. But yeah, you're stood right. up, he's thrown a lot, stood up. But as you alluded to, the head movement of Richard Herbert means he hasn't necessarily landed a lot. Uh, this is the thing: if you're looking at accurate striking and you know progressive striking and Marple's throwing the shots. They're not all landing. Herbert, he, he's, you know, he's annoying. He looks like a sloth. He looks like he's not bothered. And then when you try and punch him, he just moves. You just can't hit the guy. So here final we are. Round. Final round of the night. A lot of money on the line, a lot of prestige on the line. The Fight UK last man standing tournament in the lightweight division. Sees Cowbond's dirty Harry Marple, 10 and 0. Snapping a body kick there against Richard Herbert from Charles Martin MMA. And here we are, look, Herbert's woken up. He knows, he knows he needs this round. He's in straight for the takedown early on. Working the back. He's got to get him down on the mat here. He can't stand and work the striking game. He's got to get the rest in. He's got to get him down, and he's got to score these points, if not finish. Great balance from Marple there. Taller guy with a high center of gravity. Harder for him to, to maintain that balance when there's a, a lot of forces coming, to, coming at him from a powerful guy like Richard Herbert. Great work from Harry Marple, but this is a, a real grinding, grinding pace being pushed. By Herbert. And here we see all went to sit back for that takedown. Fingers broke, the grip broke, and he didn't have it. But Herbert controlling on the cage wall. Marple nice. throws the knee back. Nice knee to the body. Herbert Grabs. catches the knee, turns, pushes against the cage wall again. Grabs for the single. Real fast pace this in the third round. Good shout there Over. from Mark Woodard. Third round of a tournament that's seen both guys put numerous rounds in previously. Herbert in for the takedown. We can see he's physically tiring a little bit now. That was the slowest takedown I've seen from him. Herbert charging in. Marple needs to get his back off the cage. That being said, he's landing some nice strikes to the body and opening up a little bit. Can he get that trip again? Balance from Harry Marple, something to behold. Very, like, very impressive. He's like a cat. Nowhere near as cute and fluffy, but you know, in the balance sense, he's very much like a cat. Herbert pushing. This really is anybody's fight. It is. I mean, Herbert's demonstrated that he's controlling the clinch, driving on the cage wall, but like you say, Marple 
he's thrown those knees and they've landed this round. They've really landed this round. Nice knee to the body once again. Is this the way that Herbert's going to win this fight? Is he going to grind his man out up against the cage? Chipping away. Very attritional style, this. He is still working for these takedowns, but he knows when he's not got it and he's not wasting energy. Ten seconds left. A nice head kick snapped up by Harry Marple. And once again, flying in for the takedown. And there we see the end of those three rounds ever the professional amateurs straight away congratulate each other where we are at the minute that really is anybody's yeah very I, I very very close fight i wouldn't like to say mc sledge is uh, hanging around the judges tables i can see some big intakes of breath coming over from the judges tables very very close fight so what a night of fights it's been here at the Athena in Leicester fight UK last man standing Ben Cartledge and Lloyd Clarkson calling the action I think we're just about to find out who's going to walk away the winner as we go up to our okay, resident MC Andy gentlemen. Sledge for the official Once decision more, let's have a massive round of applause for both finalists come on Okay, ladies and gentlemen, after three hard-fought rounds of final action, we go to our judges' scorecards. All three judges have rendered a unanimous decision, scoring the bout 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27 in favour of your winner and last man standing. From the red corner, Harry Marple! But let's hear it for a very gallant kind of runner-up. Let's hear, let's hear it for Richard, the Herbalizer Herbert. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all we've got time for this evening. I'd like to say big thanks to all the staff of the arena. Big thanks to all the Fight UK staff. Most of all, big thanks to you, the paying customer. Without you, there would be no show. Next Fight UK event in this very building, 7th of June. See the website, buy your tickets. It's been a pleasure. My name's Sledge. Good night. We'll see you, and we wouldn't want to be you.